Hi, this is Joe from The Gentleman Stationer, and I'm doing a short walkthrough video of the pen I'm reviewing today, which is the Lamy Studio. It's a pen I haven't looked at for a while, uh, personally or on the blog. I have not reviewed this pen, though it is on my list of top pens under $75. Um, I have the flash on on this video camera so I can give you a kind of a close look up look of what the finish looks like close up. You can see it's kind of got a matte finish to it. It's not shiny like the current limited edition version of the studio, um, the Wild Rubin. This is the Ruby Red limited edition that I believe was released two or three years ago. Um, the problem that I have with this pen, I mean, first of all, I don't have huge problems with the pen as a whole. It's a great writing instrument. Um, it should be on your list of pens to look at when you're first looking at buying a gold nib pen, this and the Lamy 2000. The di main difference being that the Lamy 2000 is a piston filler. The Studio, as you'll see, is a cartridge converter filler. This is um, the big drawback. It's going to be a big drawback for a lot of people, which is the, uh, the metal section. The round metal section on this pen, a lot of people are going to think it is slippery and hard to grip. Personally, I think that it gives the pen a nice balance when you're writing with it. Um, especially if, like me, you post the cap on your pens. The one thing I do like about this pen is the uh, uh, the end of the pen, the blind, and I guess I would say the blind cap, but it's not a blind cap, uh, has this little metal ridge around the outside of the, um, of the end, um, which allows the cap to snap in and post securely. The one thing I do not like about the build on this pen is the finish, and I'll tell you why. The finish is a little bit not durable, to say the least. Um, you'll see under the cap, there's a spot where the finish is literally rubbing off the metal from where the clip meets the cap. Um, I'm not really sure how it got this bad. This pen has not been carried that hard. Um, it's gotten significantly worse since I've owned the pen. It was not there when I purchased the pen from whoever sold it to me online. And, you know, there's not much play in this clip. It's pretty tight. So, you know, the fact that the, the finish would wear off the pen to that degree is, is a bit of a knock on Lamy uh, with regard to this one. You also see some other areas here around where the cap meets the body, where the finish, the finish, is, um, the finish is wearing away. Anyway, that is, the, that is the Lamy Studio. Before I go, I'll let you take a look at the nib, which from my review, you'll see the nib is the saving grace of this pen. This is different than the Lamy 2000 nib, and you can take a look uh, and see it's not hooded like the Lamy 2000, which allows this 14 karat nib to have a lot of, uh, a lot of spring to it when you're writing with the pen, which makes it very pleasant to write with. This is an extra fine, keep in mind, Lamy extra fines run pretty wide. I don't see a huge difference between Lamy extra fine nibs and Lamy fine nibs, so this would probably write more like a classic Lamy fine. Um, another thing to note if you're thinking about buying the, uh, the Lamy Studio, it takes cart it's a cartridge converter pen. Um, it takes the proprietary Lamy cartridge. This is a cartridge of the Lamy Copper Orange Special Edition ink from a little while back. Um, also note that the Lamy Studio takes a different converter than the Safari and the, um, and the All-Star. This takes the Z26 piston converter, which is a bit larger than the one that the All-Star and the Safari take, which is the Z24 converter. So um, anyway, thanks for watching.